Okay, so I have a super, super special guest. This is like, this is a numero uno podcast. And I have like, like one of the greatest lo-fi mix artists of all time. <laughs> well, <praise. laughs> well, it's, it's, it, you're, you're one of my very favorites, man. You're very inspirational to me. We mm -hmm. have Marble Ponds mm -hmm. uh, on, on uh, the Wobble of a Lo-Fi uh, podcast, Numero Uno. And uh, thank you so much for being on, man. I really, I'm super excited to talk to you and have you here. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so just to kick things off, because I know that I, I see, I always go back to your Zelda wave for... Mm -hmm. Uh, inspiration every once in a while and people are just clamoring mm -hmm. I mean to they are like begging you for the next the yeah ne <laughs> right yeah well, what are, are your thoughts on that um well it's weird because the first one was made with sort of no thought in mind you know it was just like something I did for fun mm -hmm. so the pressure of uh, pressure is, is a strong word to use, but like, you know, the, the idea that like you're making something that people are anticipating is a sort of a way different feeling than making something that's just for your own sake. So kind of, kind of weird to hear that. And plus like, I'll be working on Zelda wave every now and then, and I'll be sitting here like chipping away at it and I'll get notifications on my phone telling me like people being like, where is it? Like <laughs> yeah, I'm literally working on it right now. Like people are, vocal about it but people are supportive at the same time yeah, like, yeah. and i haven't really like you know people message me uh, on various platforms and ask questions and i'm always happy to talk to people but um it's always like good to, to have someone who's like oh yeah you know i'm really excited about it but take your time because otherwise it's sort of like i worry that i've already taken too long you know but uh it's pretty positive messaging for the most part i'd say you get the odd weird comment here and there but Absolutely. I did. Do you have a ton of support? And, and I think that's the beautiful thing about the lo-fi. A lot of, most of the times with the lo-fi community, it's strangely very positive. Yeah. And I, and I really, really like that. Um, even with my mixes on some videos, but, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, oh, and by the way, I wanted to mention like during half, halfway through this podcast, we're going to, we're going to release like an exclusive 30 second sample of a track that you will not be able to see anywhere else mm. you, and which is awesome thank you marble ponds for yeah. allowing this allowing that in this um in this video uh, mm. along with the track list we're going to release a track list so, so uh, stay tuned on that mm -hmm. um uh so i i want to ask me where where are you from like where did you where where did you grow up um well i'm i'm from canada uh generally i i grew up uh in in victoria bc which is sort of the west coast mm -hmm. it's not where i was born though i've kind of lived a few different cities around uh around canada just moved with my parents and things like that as i grew up but i feel like i i my my actual you know uh turning into an adult and all my teenage years and stuff was was here in victoria in canada so it sort of feels like my home mm -hmm. And I've, I've kind of been here for over 10 years, well over 10 years now. So that's where I'm from, but it's just kind of a small coastal town. It's well, not small town. It's a city, but it's a small city. It's like 200,000 people. So, but it's a, a hop, skip and a jump away from Vancouver. So if you ever need to go to a concert or anything, it's always easy to hop on a boat and go over there with your friends. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? What do you do outside of lo-fi? Well, I, I work full time uh, these days, which is part of why it's hard to work on, on music all the time because I, I work as a project manager and business analyst for, for a company. I do software management for uh, mobile apps and stuff like that. So I work for a company in town and uh, you know that's, that's a decent part of my life and uh, sometimes it bleeds outside of work hours, unfortunately. But mm. um, apart from that, I, you know, I, obviously do lots of things with music and most of them are kind of private and quiet just cause that's whatever I feel like working on or, or yeah. doing sometimes, but I like playing D and D a lot. You probably hear me talk about that or something. Nice. Uh, usually that's like so the cool. second thing that I'll mention after music, but uh, <laughs> I've, I've like have one campaign with some friends I've been running for like 
almost three years now, I think. Wow. So quite the commitment. <laughs> it's, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, video games, I guess. That's probably obvious. Uh, kind of goes hand in hand. But mm-hmm. With Zelda? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm not exclusive to Nintendo content, but I always feel like they're the, the, the king kind of have been for a while probably go play luigi's mansion after this podcast (laughs) nice man yeah i I love luigi's mansion yeah yeah the new one came out today uh when this was recorded anyway oh wow okay that's Mm. awesome yeah well well and the the, i was gonna ask like what gave you kind of going to zelda wave like what gave you the idea to do that lo-fi mix of well first let me ask because mm-hmm. you you have other you have other like great music and we've talked about that before, um, and mm-hmm. I want to talk about some of your own music too. Um, but sure, what gave you the idea of why first why Zelda why why Zelda mm-hmm. and why Lo-Fi? So maybe those two, whichever mm-hmm. one you'd like to answer first. Sure, probably uh, why Lo-Fi. I guess is like. I'm I my roots of, of music are playing in bands and this will kind of come up I guess in the Zelda question as well but it's like I feel like I spent a lot of time in like as a teenager like playing in random bands and like just like with a group of people and and you know just jamming or feeling things out and it was always such a adolescent feeling process because you know when you're young and in a band and like if you get really into it and you really want to go hard at it people don't always line up with you or you know people have have their own lives going on and so when I first started like recording myself it was sort of on this idea that I think I was just listening to like a lot of because when I first like got into like artists like Tame Impala and Mac DeMarco Mm. and all those those now pretty big staples but at the time I thought they were at least kind of obscure in like the early 2010s yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, I sort of realized, oh, you can not spend that much money on recording equipment or going to a studio and and just kind of work on it in your privacy, your own home and it, call it lo-fi and people can get into it. And, you know, at the time it was sort of an excuse to record with minimal resources. But obviously, as you kind of play into it, you can see there's a lot of potential for stylized uh, content that I don't know. It just, it resonates with, with like, you know, obviously nostalgia is a whole other thing to get into, but yeah. Um, so it was sort of just an idea. It's the whole making lo-fi music started from just DIYing, recording myself, kind of being done with being in bands with people and just being like, okay, I'll buy a drum kit and I'll put two mics on it and see how that sounds. And that was like the first music I started recording. And there's lots of demos that sound terrible that I would never show anybody, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, and so I guess it was like when I listened to the music that I was making, I sort of expected it to be a certain way when I listened to it. And as I started doing more kind of electronic oriented sounds, um, it sort of was just a, a I guess, a, almost like a subconscious thing. You, you kind of drift towards that, that idea of, of, I don't know, having a bit of, of crunch to the sound or crackle or things like that. It's just, there's something comforting about it when you're listening to head on headphones and, So that was sort of why lo-fi was a thing. It wasn't really ever that deliberate, but at the same time, it was kind of in the back of my mind. So Mm. I try not to think about like the, my intentions for a soundscape because it's hard to, to describe it in your head. Sometimes it's harder to do that than it is to actually just do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Fleshing out the sound and and it's lo-fi and it's whatever, but, but it's, I try not to think too much about what I'm doing. I just kind of listen and, and stew on it for way too long and that's how I get it to a point where I'm comfortable with it so um and then you know Zelda I've always felt just was something that I personally liked and you know when I think back to playing video games as a kid or feelings that I nostalgic for like you know Ocarina of Time was one of those games where it was sort of that first feeling of like immersion and so I guess it was just something that you know, I'd been listening to to Vaporwave or uh, Chill Wave and sort of just that soundscape and was trying to kind of bridge that gap between other music I was listening to and making and also uh, the video game soundtracks. And I I remember before I ever had 
you know, use the term Zelda wave or anything. Uh, I was just making lots of songs and remixes and demos. And just like, I was in a, I was actually playing in a band at the time because, you know, I'd stopped playing in bands for a while. And then I started recording myself and that's when like the lo-fi stuff started. Mm -hmm. And then I did that for a while and I was like, Oh, I kind of want to play these songs live because I still like doing that. So instead of getting, yeah. And so instead of getting people in a room together, um, and like writing songs, I just kind of wrote songs and recorded them myself and then like went to friends and was like, Hey, like you want to play a show? Here's some songs I made. Like we can mess with them if you want. And so that way, if they didn't want to do it anymore, it wasn't like no hard feelings. Cause I guess it was, they were doing me a favor, but yeah. still fun for everybody. So anyway, I had, I've played in a couple rotating groups that all went under the name marble ponds. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So there was, there's been like, maybe like 10 people who played with me uh, kind of just in town in Victoria. Um, so we, uh, you know, anyway, I, I remember just having a bunch of remixes on my phone or something. I was driving around with a friend of mine who uh, was playing bass in the band. And I was like, Oh, I made this like Zelda remix. And I, it was like a really early version of, I think it was like maybe lost woods and yeah. title theme. I don't, it was, didn't sound very good, but I just made it for fun and, he said, well, this is so good. You know, you should make a bunch of these. And I was kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know. And then I think I should sat down again. I was like, well, okay, what if I tried it like for real and like spent a little more time on it instead of just doing it as like a demo? Uh, because, you know, Zelda again has that nostalgia that I personally identified with. And then yeah. I, I did a couple songs and I was like, okay, these actually sound like pretty good, I think. Uh, and I remember like at the time... I think I was listening to a lot of like those, uh, you know, there was a lot of these, um, like, you know, like the Simpsons way stuff where there's oh, like, yeah, yeah. blank Banshee songs and like, just like loops of um, Lisa sitting on the curb of a street or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking like, Oh, what if I could do something like that? And like, that was sort of where my idea came from. And then, but I was like, when I started downloading, like and finding clips and recording clips for like, ocarina of time footage i realized like there's so much of it that i don't want to just do like a 30 second loop for each song i want to kind of expand upon it so a lot of like zelda way was just sort of feeling things out and like i really only had a small amount of feedback from you know like my my friends and like my my partner and you know everybody was like oh it's cool yeah play with it and again so i kind of did it for a while and made this video and i spent like not a huge amount of time on it. I feel like I just kind of did it and I was like, Oh, this is cool. And I threw it on, uh, I did some other remixes beforehand. Like I did just a handful of random songs and then I put it on, on YouTube and forgot about it. And I think like three months after I'd uploaded it, it had like a couple hundred views, like less than a thousand views. And I was like, Oh, like that's the end of that. Like whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then like, it just kind of got popular, I guess over time. Like it just happens more quickly than you'd realize it. I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, but, just like the momentum can get going really fast. And then, um, yeah, there was the Kotaku interview, I think helped things a lot as well. When I, I did spoke with Kotaku along with, yeah. So that's the other thing I'll mention. There was another guy who made Zelda wave remixes, uh, or he made videos on YouTube, but, mm. and I remember when I first was like, Oh, what if I called it Zelda wave? I looked it up and I was like, I found these other videos and I was like, Oh, these are cool. But, I kind of want to do it like just Zelda songs because his compilations had sort of other music and stuff as well. And I was like, well, I wanted to make a linear collection of music. So like the first song is the first song that you hear when you boot up the game. And the last song is the last song before the end of the game. So that was sort of my idea. And I, I, I didn't steal the title from him, but I, I knew it existed, I guess, when I used it. But I, I thought I could do it differently. And yeah, he said something else. He referenced me in a podcast or something before. So I think it's all fine. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Well, let, let me, and because I, I kind of want to, I want to ask you about why do you feel that, why, why is it so relaxing? Like it, it has a certain comfort mm-hmm. and I don't know what, cause like I kind of have a, you know, when I made the, I don't know if you remember the, the Studio Ghibli. Yeah, Studio, Studio Ghibli and that one, that mix. Mm-hmm. That, that one just came from, 
And I'm just saying mine, I'm just referencing so that maybe, uh, I don't know if it'll resonate, mm -hmm. but I, I was like, I, I was watching anime a lot and I was like building my business. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I don't know, I was like really, really stressed out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would just binge on anime and I would just kind of hate to sometimes get away from it because I was so, it was so uh, cathartic. Uh, mm -hmm. and I was like, I feel like lo-fi is almost an extension of that reality without like you can, cause you can work cause I can't work with all types of music in the background. Mm -hmm. Like if I have Tame Impala, I just kind of want to sit and listen to Tame Impala. It's really hard for me yeah. to like work with Tame Impala in the background, but I can work with lo-fi in the background. And if it has like a nostalgia twist to it, it's almost like I'm not leaving that world. Mm -hmm. but I'm still productive in the process. Well, mm -hmm. what do you, like, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. Um, I definitely think that's part of the reason people like Zelda wave or other kind of lo-fi mixes like that. I think there's a sense where you can be immersed in it, but passively it doesn't require yeah. a full amount of attention, but you can give that if you want. I think like, I would say that, something about like the fantasy settings or the sci-fi settings of like certain anime can be really immersive and like the imagery is designed in a way where it, it, it's nice to look at. There's lots of great screen caps or clips or gifs from anime. Like even now still like you, you can find tons of new remixes. Like there's like lots of slowed and reverbed versions of songs on YouTube. And almost always it's like a clip from, from anime because it's the art style, like makes you think of staying up late and watching tv when you're when you're younger i don't know exactly what it is but yeah with, yeah but lo-fi music it's it's the, the beat consistency i guess is good right when you know there's not like drum fills and stuff like there is in like a in rock music or, or there's no vocals that are really grabbing your attention with hip-hop but at the same time like i think there are certain fundamental sounds in older games in particular that just they just have a, a nostalgic connotation and it's like, it's the certain string sounds and the certain piano sounds. And it's not something that you would necessarily deliberately know, I don't think, but it's like, it can still, it has a pretty powerful effect in terms of immersion. So I think yeah. that like both, you know, video games and, you know, I, I don't know, Pokemon, like anime, like all the stuff that you, people make compilations out of, like it's that, that familiarity provides a sense of comfort but the fact that somebody else has taken it and done whatever they've done with it to make it a remix, I think makes it interesting. And somewhere between that familiarity and new ishness, there's like a, a place of comfort and it's not so overly stimulating the music that it, it steals your attention away, but you can kind of just sit in it like it's a hot tub or something. And just relax. <laughs> you can yeah, do other things. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What, what are, this just kind of crossed my mind a little bit, but what are, um, what, what's like one of the most moving comments that you've ever, do you, what, what's something that comes in my, cause there's, there's a couple that come to mind that are like sad, but also very happy the way they did it. But mm -hmm. what, what are, what's a moving comment for you? Like that, that, that you've remembered in your heart. I, I definitely feel like the comments that are like, people saying that they've been having a hard time or something like that. Maybe this is what you were going to say, or you're thinking the same thing, but if someone says like, Hey, like, you know, this has helped me through tough times or I was feeling really low and I keep coming back to this, or I've seen like a comment, one person commented saying like that every time that they think they're going to have a panic attack, they pull, pull uh, the wave and listen to it. Yeah. And like, you know, I think providing the the comfort and convenience of just like chilling and listening to do it is one thing, but, knowing that it can have a bit more of an effect on people is definitely like a rewarding feeling. Like I feel yeah. like it's definitely the most rewarding thing you can, you can get out of making content like this is knowing that it has a purpose beyond just making someone feel good, but feel better. You know, I think that, yeah. that, that difference is distinguishable. And so I definitely always love hearing that. And I've had lots of conversations with people like from like random parts of the world. And yeah, I know there was one, one guy I talked to, um, not in the same vein. This one's a little more fun, but he was, uh, 
he was like Australian and I think he owned like a, a restaurant or a, like a burger joint, but like a little hole in the wall kind of thing. And I think it was like some Melbourne or something. Um, and he messaged me saying, uh, you know, he really likes the Zelda wave and he always plays it for people on this like old TV. And then he like sent me all these videos of like his bar and like, it's like downtown Melbourne, Australia. Wow. And, like, and like this old, you know, just super wide uh, or not super wide, but like super thick TV that was like mounted uh, on the shelf. And it was like, had like, you know, the one with the cassette slot and the below the screen. Yeah. 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 And then, but it, it was hooked up to a bigger speaker. So there was like, uh, so there was a bunch of people like sitting around, I guess, listening to it. And like that, that part is less like, you know, it's not as like inspiring or as fulfilling as like a comment from someone who's having a rough time, but it sort of makes you realize, oh yeah, I guess there's like people all over the, the world who listen to it. And that was kind yeah. of a eye opening thing for me. I don't know why, but. It, it, I know, man. Yeah. It's the same, uh, it, like, uh, it's 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 wild to think of that in that way because YouTube is global, but I, I always forget. And like mm-hmm. like you like you said, and um, there's uh, like similar. It's like it's yeah. That's kind of what I was pointing to a little bit because there's always this one comment that uh, it's like on my Majora's Mask one. It's mm-hmm. um, because that one is kind of sad. It's really weird. Like I was trying to make it happy, mm-hmm. uh, but. Uh, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're like, you've probably experienced this, but like, it's a totally different thing. Like I was trying to, like my Studio Ghibli one, I was trying to make it happy, Mm -hmm. but it just turned out like kind of not depressing, but you know, melancholy, you know, and that's just just what it is. And, um, and there was one, uh, one, um, I'm thinking probably a teenager, but he said he had, he had just lost his dad. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is helping him through it mm-hmm. and i was like whoa that's that's kind of crazy yeah but but it's like that's kind of how powerful music can be and soothing. Mm-hmm. and i know millions of people have seen what how i mean what what are you it's like what two million right now on yeah it's like two point something i don't think it's quite two and a half but it's somewhere between there so that's incredible it's, it's crazy yeah that's awesome, man! Congratulations on Thanks. the first on the million marker, and now you're at two million. You've doubled. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's good, but <laughs> it gives me all sorts of feelings. I guess. What 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 are those feelings? What does it give? Well, first, let me ask you: What was it mm-hmm. like to hit that million marker? What? Because I know. I mean, what what was it like? It, well, yeah, it's pretty surreal. Like you, you see that, and you're like, I think like. When it start, when it first starts getting going, that's when I was definitely counting it the most because, like, I have a remix that I did, uh, or like a, a, I did like a cover of um, uh, Mac, of um, Macintosh uh, Plus's uh, 420 song. <laughs> I'm not gonna pronounce the whole name, but uh, it, <laughs> it, uh, I did like an instrumental cover of that where I played the instruments, and that was like my most viewed video beforehand. Oh, and yeah. that was like a, that was like a hundred like thousand maybe mm-hmm. uh and uh i remember thinking at one point like oh zelda wave would never get as popular as that <laughs> but then like it it kind of passed it after a certain point and i was like like oh, okay like this thing is still moving like i don't really know where the stopping point is and then i was like counting it like you know all the time i was like wow it's still getting more popular and then once it kind of got going and then like it hit the million it was just sort of like wow like you you can't even really like think about a million people, right? Like, yeah, um, no. Like I was saying, like the the city that I live in is like two hundred thousand people, so it's like, oh my gosh, five, five times the size of that or something, which is like kind of mind blowing, especially when I'm like sitting in traffic or something. So, um, <laughs> it's kind of hard. It was sort of hard to wrap my head on, under, but again, like I think the thing is like making. I know that there's an impact and a value for other people when I make this kind of content. Yeah. But it was never something that I thought of as like a magnum opus of mine. It was just something I did, right? I wasn't really thinking too much about it. And so as it got really popular and it became like the thing on yeah. like my YouTube channel, or like if I talked to anybody about music, like I would bring it up. And it sort of took over my understanding of like my own musical, you know, outing. Uh-huh. Uh, so that 
was kind of that's kind of a weird thing it still feels like kind of weird like i never intended for it to be this forefront of what i do um yeah kind of, kind of turned into that so i'm still trying to figure out what that actually means for me and how i continue making like content because you know i i'll always love making music but i definitely feel like uh it 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 creates a sense of like you know anxiety of wanting to do well and especially when you know that people like not just want to see it for fun but they they have other impact right i, I want to make sure that i'm doing right by them and and the little things that i can get fixated on i don't think matter to those people uh, or they might not notice but i guess there's the self-fulfilling aspect of it as well where like i don't want to release it until i think it sounds good because that was my approach the first time uh, but the the process and the motivation can get affected by knowing that again, it's like, it's not just something I'm uploading and I can forget about it if I want. Right. Right. Like, no. People are going to look at it and Oh yeah. No matter how good it is, no matter how long I spend on it, someone's going to say, Oh, the first one was better or, <laughs> oh. you know? And so I, yeah, I try not yeah. to think about it, but uh, it well, still kind of creeps in the back of my mind. So what, what, okay. What, mm. because it, it's kind of similar to, because my channel was never meant to be a lo-fi channel. I did not, mm -hmm. not, nothing wrong with it, but uh, it was never meant to be that. But then the YouTube algorithm was like, it's a lo-fi channel now, you know? Yeah. And, but what, what I want to ask you is like, because you, you have Marble Ponds mm -hmm. and it was music before. And I know you like, like what is the future of marble ponds like mm -hmm. are you a little worried that um zelda wave has just completely taken over because there is a huge audience for it now i mean mm -hmm. there's a there's a good size audience and you can mm -hmm. you can stoke that fire and they're gonna mostly want things around probably zelda or mm -hmm. or, or around lo-fi ish something like that you know but mm -hmm. but then you also have your your you know your other original music what mm -hmm. what are what are your plans for all that and are, are you afraid that zelda wave is just going to completely take over yeah i mean it's definitely something i've thought about a lot uh because you know i, I want to grow and improve all the time i feel like especially in terms of like creative outputs like if you're not getting better at something or moving in a direction there's like not really point to doing anything you'll get bored yeah yeah uh, um, so I feel like I definitely want to progress and I, and I think back to the songs and stuff that I released. So that was mostly like, I think 2014 was the first release I put up there. So it was not a short amount of time ago now. Uh, mm -hmm. and I feel like my music tastes have, have probably changed since then. And I, I look back on that music like fondly, like I still like it. You know, I don't think it's the quality is good or anything like that, which is, I guess, part of the process. But <laughs> I think that Zelda wave is something where as much as I like the impact of it or knowing that people are listening to it or knowing that it has a special place in people's heart, it's not something I'm going to stick to forever. That's just because, you know, not only is it something where I just don't want to do the same thing for too long, but also like, I don't feel like it's truly my thing. Um, and it's, you know, I am, I'm kind of riding on the wave of Koji Kondo. It's, it's ultimately a tribute to, other people's music which not that there's anything wrong with that but i know that i can get more satisfaction out of feeling like i'm fully involved mm -hmm. so my my pseudo plan i guess is to <laughs> give people what they want for a little bit uh and just stoke that fire um did you say that earlier did i steal that from yeah you? Well, uh <laughs> it borrowed it yeah so so you know well you know that's borrowing and stealing i guess it's a whole other conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i want to give people what they want for a bit because i want to you know see what those expectations are and it's also just a challenge for myself like am i able to to meet that and feel okay about it and i feel yeah. like i'm it's i've delayed a lot and i know people know that and some people are really supportive but anyway i i Around the time, yeah, around the time that I finished uh, the first one, I bought this uh, this VST. Um, it's a Roland VST, and it's like weird and like old, and it doesn't work that well with my computer, and I have a bunch of weird issues with it. Um, uh, but it's uh, it's it's 
essentially connected to these these sound groups. Uh, I think it's called the sound, not sound pad, but sound something. Anyway, uh, it's it's a collection of sounds that are you that were used in like PS One and N sixty four games. Oh wow, really? Um, the SC fifty five sound canvas. That's what it's called. Yeah. The, so the the SC fifty five is a specific instrument that was used in all these because of its. I think they were able to easily take the signal and and make it compatible with. Like oh. and ones and stuff. So I've been playing around with that a lot. And it sounds like I think I said this before, but like there are certain just like string sounds and choir y voice sounds and things that are unique to Zelda, but um or or are familiar in the context of Zelda, but I wanna take that sound and kind of modernize it and mm. not, not modernize it, but like what am I trying to say? I think there's a potential for me to make music that's somewhere between what I used to do and what Zelda Wave is. Ooh, okay. It can, it can right, is it, you know, I, I just, this kind of, not to interrupt, but um, uh, cause it's like, do you know who Pogo is? Who, who sorry? P Pogo, have mm. you ever heard of him? No. Really? Mm. Man, maybe you should check him out cause, mm. so what he did, and you may have probably seen some of his videos, but he did like these Disney cut up videos mm -hmm. uh, to to like uh, kind of uh, house beats or mm. I'll, I'll just look, look it up because he, he started off. It's very similar trajectory that you're kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. And he's been able to kind of marry it like mm. what people loved about his original work, like because he has one when Alice in Wonderland and it's like really dope visuals. Mm. Mm -hmm. um and mix like remixes um but he's kind of after he kind of built that audience he started doing original but in the vein of that mm -hmm. and and people loved it and they actually kind of embraced it but it, it was it was not it was not a it's not an easy path but now he he's much more now it's like a lot more you know acclimated yeah that sounds dope i'll i'll check him out i, I think uh it's definitely something i want to try to do i i i like to think like the thing is like with zelda wave like one of the most common comments and stuff that i get is uh people asking for a specific game which yeah is great and all but i'm not gonna make donkey kong country wave you know <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not as personal with me and it's hard for me to stay motivated for making a whole album's worth of thing and i could make songs here or there but there's also the legality of sample based music and maybe i'll just leave it at that you know i want to move towards something where again like i feel like it's my a bit more of my domain that i have control over but yeah i have a lot of ideas there i don't want to say too much i guess but <laughs> I think like playing with sounds that are still nostalgic and kind of finding the root in that and what I think people like. And then also visuals as well. Um, you know, I've, I've played around a little bit with for, for over the years um, with like, obviously, uh, you know, there's a pretty common programs that people use for, for 3d graphics and things like blender. And, uh, and I've, I'm re-familiarized with myself with it not that long ago. And I, I want to potentially explore like, and it's an even more content that I'd be spending time on, but it's like, that's kind of what makes it worth it for me. This idea where I can potentially create my own 3D visuals that are yeah reminiscent of N64 things or, or PS1 or, or that kind of late 90s era and just sort of appeal to that with something that I'm doing on my own. So, and I have a lot of music that I've been, been making that I think sounds pretty good, but it's also kind of just sounds like Zelda wave and then it's beats. And like we talked about before, it has that passiveness where you can put it in the background and it's all just ideas right now. Cause I don't want to spend too much effort on it until I'm done this Zelda wave too. Otherwise I'll get really sucked into it and then I won't be able to come back. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I would love to do that, but I think it's going to require a lot of careful moves. Um, you know, and I think part of the reason why Zelda wave two has taken so long is because at the same time that I was recording or, or making it, I was recording another album that, oh wow, you know, is maybe six, 65, 70% complete or something like that. And it sounds a lot more like my old music. And I realized that like doing two things at once isn't getting anything done. And I did that for mm. like 
well over a year before I really had that realization. And I was like, okay, I should probably just focus on one thing. And then I focused on Zelda Wave. But the problem was, it's like when I wasn't motivated to work on Zelda Wave, I'd work on this other project. Yeah. So I, I can get a, get a bit scatterbrained and I'm trying to work on focusing on what I'm doing. Yes, yes, me too. And I think the first step is just finishing things. I think like if I give any, any advice to anybody who makes music or wants to make creative projects is like finish something. <laughs> it's the hardest part, right? Yes. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, my, my, my fiance, she does writing and creative writing for, that's her thing. And she, oh, she's, cool. she has success in that and that, you know, it's not her career, but it's something where they have, uh, she has involvement with, um, you know, book sales and an and, and agent and things like that. But oh, wow. we, we can often connect on kind of the struggle of having a new idea that's fresh is really fun, exciting. But when you get to the stage where you're just refining things and making it uh, ready for someone else's gaze, then it's really hard, you know, and it takes forever, you know, and it's the motivation is so different that you have to force yourself to do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything done. So I'm trying to get better at that, I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's obvious. Yeah. And I, I can I can imagine too, now that you have, uh, like, I, I mean, mine's probably, a, you know, I have a bit of a microcosm with it too, because I, I, I do have a, a, a bit of an audience, but mm -hmm. with the lo-fi mix, but it's like with yours, I, I mean, I, I go, if I, you know, if you go to the channel right now and you look on the video, people are, craving it you know and it's been consistent uh it's actually been seems like it's actually picking up more and more it, and, it yeah i think occasionally zelda web gets like played by like a streamer or something like that like mm -hmm. like like speedrunners like use it a lot um at the end of their videos and stuff and so that's sort of what keeps the algorithm like recommending it to people i think wow like just randomly or like what happened the other day uh, iDubs had uh, like 10 seconds of that Mac Plus cover I was talking about. Oh, really? His video, and then I got like an influx of views from that. Wow. Which is funny because it wasn't even credited. Like, yes, thanks, iDubs. He played like the song and they didn't link it, but people still found it. <laughs> the internet's weird, you know. They were, they were like, we gotta, I gotta figure that out. I gotta know where that song's coming from. Or, or maybe they already knew, but I don't know. So it was weird. Maybe someone put it in the comments. I wasn't about to sift through an iDubs comment section just to f feed my ego. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, let me, so uh, I'm going to take a, let's take a quick break so that we can listen to the track real quick. Sure. And I, and I want to listen to the track so I can ask you some more things about it. Mm -hmm. um and then we'll be we'll be right back with that and the track listing too sure yeah okay sounds great Okay, we are back. Just listen to uh, what was the name of the clip? Observatory theme. Observatory theme. Yes. I don't know if I'll call the track that, but that's the sample. It's from when you you know you go up into the observatory. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, man. Oh, it was it was it's it's sick. It's it's so beautiful and and but it does the thing the thing here's the thing about it too is that it has like a fresh feel to it. Mm -hmm with the nostalgia and i feel like that is the hardest thing to capture because it's so old mm -hmm. um but it has a fresh almost higher fidelity for a lo-fi mix i don't know if that makes sense you know what i mean yeah. i'm kind of going for something like that i don't know again like it's hard to, i try not to think about it too much but it's yeah. something like that where you're like okay how do i make this sound good and bad at the same time <laughs> just gotta kind of feel it out because all the samples sound differently and like the quality of the songs that i'm actually sampling is not that high yeah i think a couple of them are actually mp3s uh, don't tell any like 
production junkies that but it yeah. doesn't really matter when you use them a certain way in certain parts mm -hmm. I, my, um, but I try deliberately to have a similar yet different style as well I think it just kind of happens naturally as well I don't quite mix things the same way I used to so Zelda Wave 2 is definitely it's a bit fattier and like bassier I think some of the bass songs are a lot heavier and there's less No, there's not less of something. I guess it's just it. Uh, that's the forefront of it. Is there's kind of I try to make it a bit darker sounding, but not in a way that's too creepy because I didn't want people to be too tripped out when they're listening to it and get scared while they're falling asleep or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so it's somewhere in the middle of like dark. I don't know some interpretation of dark sounding music if it was still chill. I guess. <laughs> well i mean and this and that that's that sam that part of that song mm -hmm. um that section uh i mean it has a it has a beautiful um melancholy feel it's like now is Zelda wave 2 is it based around majora's mask yeah it's all majora's mask songs so it's, gotcha. it's the same idea as as ocarina of time where the first song that you hear is the first song in the game and the last song is like the last song that you oh hear. wonderful so it's wonderful. still and it, the clips are going to get lined up in a way where like you know it's supposed to be like the, the easiest way to have that nostalgia trip is by like showing the clips of the progression so you feel like when you watch a 20 whatever minute video it's like you played the game yeah yeah zelda wave one is like 20 minutes i think the second one is like 28 minutes so it's a bit longer oh, cool yeah it's got Thank more you. tracks too yeah <laughs> Thank you, because it's too short, man. Yeah, I know. People, that's the other thing. But you know what? That's a big part of it, too, um, is like sometimes I'll make a really cool sounding beat from one of the samples. And part of my, there's a part of me that's like, just loop it forever because it sounds so good. But like, I think that it works a little bit better when you don't quite get enough of what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing again, you know? So it's like, I don't think any given sample is for longer than like two minutes two and a half minutes damn yeah so it's just like keeps keeps things moving right and it's like but the beats are slow so it doesn't feel like it's fast i think except for that song it's a little faster but, um, that song that song that's a that's a banger dude that's a banger i already i'm calling it i'm calling yeah, it now i think i think so i haven't touched that the mix for that one like like five months it's the one that's been fine for a while nice uh, uh and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you right now, mm. right now if I can, if I can if I can make a one hour because I already know somebody else is gonna do it. I'm gonna yeah. ask your permission way ahead of time when mm. it comes out. If is it would it be okay if I made like a one hour homework edit? Yeah, no, I'll send you I'll send you stems and stuff. Don't worry. I, oh my gosh, I'm I'm happy to do that. I that's one thing is like people whenever people ask if they can use it for stuff like I really. It's, that's like I'm using something that doesn't even really belong to me in a way, right? So I kind of feel like I want to just continue sharing it. And it's like, hey, I take something that's the source that we all like and I can do my thing to it and then I give it to you and you want to do your thing with it. Then that's like all the better. You know, I think art is, really cool. is refining things and putting your own twist on things. Anyway, so yeah, please please feel free to, to make loops or if people make their other videos. Um, yeah. Uh, I I think that one will probably do well. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to say too much. I really don't know how people are going to react. <laughs> but I well, think, I'm. I think that one just from hearing it because I'm I'm bringing up. I want to bring up your track list too because I said I would. And I'll put it in the description as well. Sure. Um, Those names might change, but it has all the samples in them. So. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. That's totally good. So we have. We have the intro title, Fairy Fountain 2, which is deep yeah. as fuck. Yeah. Uh, opening Majora's Theme. Mm. Um, Song of Healing. Is that, ja is that Chinese or Japanese? Uh, yeah, it's Japanese. It's kanja characters. Or, so kanja characters. Yeah. Cool. I think it's the word death, actually. I think that's what I pasted there. Oh, wow. Okay. Have you <laughs> I, I can get into that after, but yeah, no problem. Uh, observatory mayor's meeting. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's like in the middle of that song that you listen to. <clears throat> it cuts from observatory theme. 
I don't know why I did this, but I had all these samples and I had like it cuts from mayors or it cuts from an observatory to theme, to yeah. mayor's theme back to observatory theme, which I guess technically that's kind of out of order in terms of when you might hear the songs, but I'd found, I noticed something where the melodies kind of overlap um, or, or there's a way to, to pitch up one of the songs so that they both, one of the melodies fits into the other one. So mm -hmm. it does like observatory theme first and then it does mayor's meeting. And then at the end of the song, it plays both at the same time. And it sounds kind of weird. Interesting. But it they they play each other up a little bit. It nice. sounds better when you listen to it. It's, it's not garbled and garbage in your ears because it's right. it's pretty meticulously mixed to try and isolate a certain melody. And then again, I use that that sound canvas VST. So I took like the the flute sound that I was trying to get, and I just like made my own version of it as well. Oh, and, nice and stuff like that, just to try and bring it forward anyway that's so mayor's meeting is kind of kind of out of place but it just fitted with that song so i did it beautiful mm -hmm. so it, it's a banger uh, it's a, mm -hmm. i already know it is i already know it is i'm calling it <laughs> uh termina field is the mm -hmm. next one stone tower temple yeah and giant steam which is um that's i'm assuming when when they're yeah mm -hmm. okay so yeah. And, and then how do you pronounce it because we have I think it's tattle and tail. Tattle and tail. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now I remember. It's been a while since I played Majora's Mask. Oh, and that's the other thing I was going to ask before. Okay. And the, the last track is last end credits. Very yep. cool. Mm -hmm. um, that's the other thing I want to ask is like, did you, are you, did you play the game to get re-inspired or did you just like, what, what, what was that? What was that like? I, I played it a bit on like emulators and stuff, especially cause like I wanted to remember how things actually happened and try to like, I think the beginning of the video is like one of the most important parts because it's like how yeah. you get roped into it. And I wanted to play the first beginning of the game, but you know, I'm not gonna make a remix for every temple. I wish that I could, but <laughs> I didn't do that with Ocarina and I'm not gonna do it with Majora's Mask just cause there's so much great music. And I wanted to choose like the ones that I think work best in a wavy kind of context. So yeah, yeah. I didn't wanna play through the whole game. And I played through, last time I played through Majora's Mask, like full, it was on 3DS. Would have been in like 2015 maybe. So it wasn't that long ago. No, that's not that long ago. Yeah, but I, uh, to be honest and it's kind of like a secret. I can't tell many people this, but like I, I when I was a kid, I never actually beat Majora's Mask. Uh oh, because I didn't own it. Um, I think I rented it from like Blockbuster. Oh man, yeah, yeah. And, and and like I think I got close, but you know that was back in an age like when I played Ocarina of Time. If I got stuck on something, I would like pick up my house phone and call my friend's house and like talk to his mom, be like, "Hey, is so and so there?" And I'm like, "I'm stuck on the part where." Yeah. You know, and so I, I remember like that was sort of the era that I was in. I was starting to move. My friends were moving away from that when I like, was playing Majora's Mask. So I didn't beat it with their help and I didn't end up buying it. So, and I played it years later, but I didn't play it when I was a kid, kid. So there's still nostalgia there, but it's not like I wasn't as as dedicated as I think I was to Ocarina. Yeah. Was, like several times as a kid. I don't know. And that's, that. a, that's the kind of thing too. It's like people, a lot of, man, a lot of kids don't understand these days you know like gamers now it's like man there was no youtube back then mm -hmm. there was very little like nobody gave a crap about it on on, on the internet yeah um uh if you even if that if you were even if that was even your thing if you even thought of doing that the internet was definitely not a place for kids in like the late 90s and early 2000s <laughs> it only started to become that around that time but forums and stuff were like the only way you could maybe get info there. But like maybe, yeah, I couldn't do that when I was like you know seven years old, eight years old, or whatever. So my kids can do that now, I guess. It's true. Oh. You buy a guidebook back then. That was the other thing you could do. A couple of my friends had like those expensive guidebooks for Majora's Mask and stuff. Like that was how they beat it. Maybe that's why they didn't pick up when I called. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that those guidebooks, man. I mean, I never bought them because I kind of felt like it was cheating, but then I would get really, really frustrated. And I was like, man, I wish I had a guidebook. Yeah. Uh, but, um, well, what are some of your, what are your, uh, well, let me ask you first. Have you, have you played Breath of the Wild? 
Oh yeah. I've, I've played that a lot. Uh, yeah. What I do you think it, of Breath of the Wild, man? Well, it's amazing. Yeah. I think it's up there with all the classics as far as I'm concerned in the Zelda space. I, I bought it on Wii U, like when it was new. Mm-hmm. And then I beat it and a hundred percent of it on Wii Oof. U. Found all the core, wow. no, not all the Korok seeds. That was the only thing I didn't do. Oh uh, yeah, I was like, seriously, all the Korok yeah. seeds? No, yeah, no, I, 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 I think, yeah, I, I did everything but that basically. Anyway, all the shrines and stuff, and I have a lot of hours sunk in that game. Couldn't tell you how many. And then I bought a Switch, and then I bought it again. <laughs> 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 So I, I I haven't beaten it actually again on Switch. I'm in the middle of that right now, but I'm still playing it basically. I think yes. it's and like, you know, I heard a lot of people that even like in the in the Zelda Wave comments talk about how Breath of the Wild, because the soundtrack isn't um isn't as present that it's not the music isn't as good or something like that. Hmm. But you know, I've heard that that you know it's not as as timeless i don't know people always look at the past with rose pe- rose colored glasses which is i guess ironic for me to say that but anyway <laughs> <clears throat> i think that breath of the wild soundtrack is so perfect for what it is because it's not the same story that no other games have where it's a very linear and driven thing yeah and i think when the music is there it's like really impactful and I think the sound design in general, I think Nintendo has an amazing group of people. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the behind the scene footage of the the sound designers when they're doing like the footsteps for Link. And, you know, there's like footage of them with like little slippers and they're like doing this on like a oh wow AstroTurf. And like there, there's so much thought and, and attention to detail into the, uh, into the, the way that they design those signs, the design those sounds and like the Rito Village theme is like so amazing. It still captures that same feeling that I feel like other Zelda songs have. And I think it's a great game. People wanted me to make that as well, but I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I don't oh, think Oh really? It, that was my next question. I was yeah. gonna say, like after Zelda Wave two, mm-hmm. what's gonna be for if you know, if you if. feel it. If yeah. if you know, that's cause I know it's a big if and it's a big ask too. But what if like you do three Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you think Breath of the Wild maybe, maybe? I don't think that would be the next one I would do. Oh, really? I would definitely oh. think about doing certain songs as remixes, but I think part of the thing for me is like, I don't want to force the nostalgia and like, it still feels so new to me. Oh, I see. Oh, that's still interesting. An still an $80 game, you know, or that's how much it is in Canada. 60 bucks in the US. Are you, are you from the US by the way? I'm, yeah. I'm, oh yeah. I'm from Austin, Austin, Texas. Austin. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it's like still full price game. So like it doesn't oh, yeah. feel like I don't know. Maybe that's just like arbitrary, but <laughs> you know, weirdly enough, the one that what I would slot next is probably Twilight Princess. Actually, oh nice, yes. I think that that game I played it on GameCube, which in my mind, even though Wind, well, not the order of that Wind Waker came out first, mm-hmm. Wind Waker yeah. was great, but it's more like. I don't know, like like you mentioned something about the melancholic effect of nostalgia. I think the thing about nostalgia is that it's like a complicated emotion. It's both good and bad at the same time. And I think that it's important to think back on things in a way where you could acknowledge that things are over and ending, but also feel positive about the fact that things have to come to an end, you know? Yeah. And I think that there's a melancholic realization that when things are really fun and exciting, like doesn't, they don't last forever. And if they did, then they wouldn't actually be that fun. So it's important to, to feel the full uh, span of emotions that you can feel there. Mm. I think that I love Wind Waker. I think it has a great soundtrack. It's a great game, but I feel like it's very optimistic I don't know. Like it's so I'm sure there's like, there's tons of nostalgia in the song. The songs and stuff are great, but I think that Twilight Princess is a bit more, you're a bit more beaten down or something by it. And the the stakes are a little bit more, you know, like the game is so dark and like, you're trying to like, in, in a way, I think Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are like that, right? When you're, I mean, there's the whole thing with Ocarina and this is obvious. And I didn't even realize it until I was like, you know, halfway into making the video, 
I was like, oh man, like there's a lot of themes to this game that totally parallel like nostalgia in general, where like when you play Zelda, way, Zelda Ocarina of Time as a kid, it's like you're young and you're innocent and the world's all bright and sunny. And then like when you are an adult in the game, there's like re-deads in, the, in Hyrule uh, Village and there's like everything's terrible now and dark. And it's like, that's not a, a healthy, perfectly healthy way to view things, but I feel like I can feel like that sometimes maybe, you know? Yeah. How, of simple things were when you were a kid and like that parallel between child and adult um, is kind of weird in Ocarina of Time, how it lines up like that. So that was just like a coincidence, honestly. Like I played it up once I realized it was there, but I feel like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why Twilight Princess to me fits that, that feeling. I guess that's one of those things that I try not to think too much about, but I feel like the I played that one a lot. Oh, probably, okay. Probably more than Wind Waker, actually, if I think about it, really. Dude, did you ever finish Wind Waker? Long time ago. Okay, because, like, I... It's a huge game. I mean, it is a huge game. Jesus yeah. Christ. Mm-hmm. But on tw- on Twilight Princess, mm. I mean, I yeah, I, that would be so sick if you did Zelda Wave 3 for Twilight Princess, because it's yeah. such a freaking awesome game, and it's dark. It's yeah. dark. And there are really good songs. Like I think I know Koji Kondo obviously has been involved in like basically everything. But there's like certain songs in that on that soundtrack that I think are like so good. Like you know, I was saying I play D and D a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. And I kind of have this like whole media based approach of when I'm DMing, because I, I DM the games. I, I don't actually play very much. I'm a dungeon master for everything. And I oh, love really yeah i love twilight princess music like it's one of the most abused things that i use is like you know the the characters or the players start walking in the forest and i'll play fair on woods because it's like it's kind of dark but it's also like mysterious and and then like there's like the after credit scene or the after cre- after bass boss battle uh song is like super good i to remember what it's actually called but there's like Queen Rudala is it was an amazing song. I don't know. There's so, it's the music itself. I don't know. I don't know if I can really explain it that well. But I feel like Twilight Princess has that darkness in the songs that both enhance the optimism when it is there, but also kind of create that dynamic range where yeah. the colors and vividness of Wind Waker are, are so bright that it would be really hard to kind of force it to be have sad elements to it. I guess even if there are some songs that have that feeling. Mm -hmm. How would I take a a pastel blue shot of Link sailing across the ocean and try and make it just totally chill? I don't know if it would quite work. I I don't visualize it, but I highly encourage anyone who wants to try that to try it because I'm not the only one who's going to make these sorts of things. So, Yeah. Well, and and kind of speaking to, uh, like, speaking to that a little bit, because... Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm assuming I, I'm assuming you played games when you were like a lot when you were younger. Can I? Is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah, like decent, a decent amount. Do you think that? Because like to me, I feel like I played it way too much. I I, I used to play. I mean, it was kind of an escape because I I went to like a a pretty fucked up school, um, mm-hmm. and uh, like my elementary school years were fantastic. Mm. Um, and I still played a lot of games a ton when I was, you know, younger, like, you know, all, all the, you know, but with mm-hmm. middle school, uh, it was like really, um, it was like a pretty ghetto school mm-hmm. and I was not that kind of a person and it was a huge culture shock and I just like kind of tuned out and just mm-hmm. went into video games, like super hardcore. Mm-hmm. But do you think that? um video games help you like do you think there are benefits to video games because i i kind of have this in terms of like maybe cognitive ability in terms of design because for me i feel like my cognitive ability along with design because i i design websites uh that's okay that's my business but uh i feel like because i feel like kind of website is kind of like a video game in a way and that's how i've always felt but i don't know what are your thoughts in terms of like do you feel like any of that 
that video games have nurtured a skill set that has somehow like transferred over into anything? That's a good question. I think that I definitely felt like video games were were an escape. And I think that more so than like, like it, there's a pretty, there's a lot to unpack in that question because I guess yeah. when you think, when you think about like being a kid and then being, I guess being an adult, like that, that what video games were throughout my life, like they've kind of changed. Like the, the escapism part of it is always what I've liked the best. And even now, like the games that I play the, that resonate the most with me, like in terms of providing, well, actually let me go back for a sec. I think first of all, like I agree with what you're saying that there's a value in them. I think that, you know, anything in moderation, I think people, you can go really crazy with video games and like, yeah, there's so many obviously varieties of like ways that you can play games and socialize with your friends. And sometimes there's like, a tendency to just let it take over and i think i'm probably guilty of that as well where sometimes it's just easier just to play games than do the thing you probably should be doing (laughs) yeah it doesn't mean it's bad like you have to allow yourself to do things that inspire you i I try to think that like for me like you know i have a a job and a career and it's, it's it's great and all but it's not what i'm passionate about and i can never really force myself to truly feel a way about work as I do about like doing creative things. Mm. And I think that if you're going to consume content, this is just my personal opinion. If you're going to consume creative content or, or content, it should, it should always serve the purpose of, of like either making you feel better about yourself or life or whatever, or inspiring you to do things or to, to, you know, whatever that means for you. It doesn't mean that like the things that you consume have to directly correlate to the things that you create, but I think it's all part of one big process, you know? And I think that even before I ever made Zelda wave, like I would certainly feel like when I was a kid, if you asked me what music was the most impactful to me, I would talk about video games, right? Like that was my first exposure to feeling like music has an impact. And then like, and I think like Ocarina of Time's soundtrack is so timeless that it's just like it has that inspira- inspiring feeling and it always had that. And so I feel like that ultimately led to me making music in, at, at all, even before I ever was remixing it. Oh, know? cool. I, I, I feel that way. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I, I, it's hard to, to think out loud about it, but I think that the cognitive abilities that come from video games, like sure, like your reflexes can get better and, and stuff like that. And, I mean, it might not always be good for your eyes if you do it for too long or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's just what my mom used to say. But um, I feel like if you're going to consume content, you should try and 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 think about what it means to you and what you, you know, even if it's just something, oh, it just makes me feel relaxed, you know, or, you know, I play Animal Crossing because it's a, I feel satisfied when I can add things to my house you know it doesn't have to be huge but i think that you know we all are living our lives and working and going to school or doing whatever we do and it's important to have a means to to establish your identity so that it can inform the things that you do and and i think video games can be consumed in a way that doesn't always reflect that i find in particular like and i'm not disparaging anybody else or what they play because i'm you know, we're all, we all have our own opinions, but I think that people who, if you, if you get too involved in something where it's repetitive and you're doing the same thing every time that you're sitting down, like it's not, you you have to realize that that's going to not always add that much to you. It's sort of like an endless cycle, which, you Mm. know, which I think can happen sometimes, but I think that's where you can potentially have problems from, from, you're spending time on something and maybe you don't even like it. Like, you know what I mean? You've ever heard someone yeah. say that where like, where there might be like, oh man, I hate this game. It's trash now. Do you want to play? Like, <laughs> or like that, that relationship, like that's kind of bizarre I, to me. Cause if I feel that way, I'd try to move on to something else. Yeah. I, I think that's like, um, I, I do that sometimes and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so guilty of that. I'm trying to get better um, uh, of like narcissism. It's almost like, Cause sometimes I'll play smash ultimate and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you play smash. Do you play smash ultimate at all? Oh yeah. man. Um, I'm super, super competitive. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's in my nature and I'm really, um, and I have like elite smash on three characters and I'm very proud of that, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, what characters, um, Ganondorf, cause he's just too much fun. He's just too much fun, man. Um, and Rob is my main, 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 uh, Rob. Interesting. Yeah, Rob is my main main, and then the I'm trying to nurture this other main Joker just because he's super top tier and he's a lot of fun to play. Yeah, um, those three. But sometimes, dude, it's it gets completely counterproductive, and I get super upset. And I I'm like I'm a grown fucking man, and sometimes yeah. I just get ridiculously upset. And I, I and then I look back at myself. I'm like, you're you're you look completely stupid right now and yes yeah, so i've i've raged at smash a couple times as well like there's nothing worse than thinking that you're hot shit until you play against somebody who's like destroys you or like barely oh yeah oh worse. yeah like i think you know competitive games are a whole other thing um i don't necessarily like see them as i don't want to say that i was gonna say they're not as like artistically inspiring to me but like mm-hmm. they're entertaining and they have a completely different value because like you know, I say that you shouldn't do the same thing over and over again, but there was a solid period where I think I played Smash like every evening. <laughs> for, like, yes. Just because like it's fun and it's like, a you know, anyway. Well, I, I was really big into the Melee scene uh, in San Antonio. Oh, that's that's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. man. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother beast, a whole nother animal. And I got yeah. really, I don't know if you, have you seen the documentary, the Melee documentary? No, I, I know what you're talking about though. Yeah. Uh, and that, that just kind of was like, I was like, I watched that and I was like, I didn't know this game was that cool or it's still Mm -hmm. cool or people still play it. And, Mm -hmm. and I, I always loved it. And I was like, do I still have it? And I found that and I started playing it. And then I started seeing like all this amazing shit that people were doing with it. And now I'm pretty good at it. And I got to play in locals. I started playing in tournaments. Oh, wow. but dude, oh my god! Like the the bar to entry with melee, it's just so ridiculous. Like the talent that's in melee right now, yeah, it's 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 monstrous. Like mm-hmm. even the locals, like if you start playing with some of those guys, they're just they're monsters. They're complete monsters. Yeah, I remember one time I like observed a, a melee tournament going on at my my university. When I was in school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing those people and I was like, oh my God, like, because like all the, you know, the, it's it's the funniest thing too, like the story behind that game. Like, I don't know if you know, like the development background or if you've heard that whole thing where like Sakurai was basically given like a budget and a timeline and Nintendo really wanted to fast track Melee hmm. to get it out before for, for launch for GameCube because they wanted to sell consoles. Right, right. And I think, I can't remember exactly the details of it, but Sakurai like talks about that time as being like one of the most difficult times in his life because he persevered so much to keep the game going and moving. And like a lot of the things that people love about it from Melee, like, you know, wave dashing and all that stuff, like they're yeah. incidental. They weren't even like deliberately put in the game. Like it just came together so quickly. And like, there was like things, he, he worked like 15 hour days. He was just like never leaving the office and like barely slept, barely ate. Like he, it took a toll on his health. And like, when I hear that and I think about Melee, like I feel like it's an art form again. Like this is kind of going that whole, like like the short answer to our video games art, like the answer is yes, obviously. And I think like <laughs> the way that you can consume it can make it more or less like artistically. Yes, exactly. Something. You know, but I think like that- it, it's up to you. Not, I'm sorry, not to interrupt, but it's oh like, like to, to kind of piggyback off of you. It's like, it's almost like it's up to you to Mm -hmm. make it art like it's yeah yeah. right it's kind of like a marriage between two because you can just play and and and, you know uh for fun or Mm -hmm. and mash buttons blah 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 but dude when you say when you see like mango uh just do like the ridiculous the most ridiculous combos Mm -hmm. that no human should be able to do um so impressive yeah yeah it's like it's like looking at you know, or like PPMD, which is one of my other favorites. 
Um, but it's like, it, it's so funny because somebody put like a, a Mozart uh, soundtrack to like a oh. combo video <laughs> yeah. for uh, Falco uh, and it was PPMD. And it's because he was so elegant with his combos. Um, you know, oh, can you, can you, can you see me right now? Can you see me? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, it, 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 it cut out for a minute. I, it just, I kind of heard the rough roughness of what you're saying. You were saying he's elegant with his combos and the music aligned with that. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't lose you. Did I freeze uh, as well? You just kind of turned, yeah. Yeah, you, you froze, you froze a little bit. But yeah, yeah anyways, I, I, I cut you off, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. Yeah, I mean, I think that like the talent and dedication that people put into video games, like I don't want to disparage like repeating yourself for, for honing a skill. I think for me personally, like, and this is just my opinion again, like I don't think that I've ever been, like I'm, I can be competitive about things. Mm -hmm. When I was like a bit younger, I was a lot more competitive. Um, but uh, I tend to, like, like esports as an example, like I think it's, I definitely get why people are into it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's cool. And I think it's like modern and it's a, it's like definitely something that I casually can kind of keep an eye on, but at the same time, like, it's not really something I personally love. Like I don't, I would never go to like an esports tournament. And I, uh, I feel like if I had kids one day and my, my son told me he wanted to be a, a an esports athlete, I would kind of like, okay, like I, <laughs> I wouldn't really like, but it's not really in my head as well. Cause I just don't, I don't know if I see see video games that way, but like again, that's just my opinion. I think like at the same time, if I hear someone like like talking shit about esports and like talking about how they're not real sports, like I'll always defend them because I don't think that you know what I mean. Like yeah, it's, like, it's just not really my thing. Um, at least in terms of what I would do. But that being said, like I think out of all the games that I find the most interesting, that Smash is definitely one of them because like. I feel like I've been playing Smash with my friends, like, you know, since I was, since Smash, since I had Smash. Like, I've played every Smash game, and it's like, I think it's probably my most hours out of every game on Switch, actually. Oh, really? So, yeah, that's just because, like, sometimes it's just like, you're nothing better to do. I'll throw Smash on. Like, it was easy for, for a while. But I'm, no, I'm no, nowhere near your skill level. It's pretty casual. And I'm probably rusty now. It's been a minute since I've played, but... <laughs> It's it's kind of like a it's a I'm I'm a little worried about it. I'm, it's kind of like a drug. Uh, it's it's addicting with the competitive play because when you're able to, it's so crazy when because especially with melee because melee is the thing that kind of taught kind of helped because there's a barrier you break mentally, mm -hmm. and when you break that barrier, you're like, oh, I can do things that that nobody can really do unless yeah. you're in the scene, right? Mm -hmm. And when you know that, it's kind of like you're in a club. Mm. And it's also like cathartic to do it. And mm. it's also super like so like especially during a tournament, like the adrenaline's pumping, people are watching. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God. And then you actually win. Uh mm. and then you beat somebody with a great combo. The 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 dude, the just the it's I just I know exactly what you mean. I feel like the competitive victories are some of the most incredible like feelings, yeah. but there's like, there's the drop off of like, if you're playing competitively against somebody and you lose, like it's so heartbreaking. Like it's, it is, there's, it's a high risk, high reward kind of thing. Yes, exactly. And that's where I'm kind of like, even with online, I, I still like my heart gets pumping, you know, I'm a heart yeah. gets pumping and me too. That's part of the reason why I'm not that good at <laughs> online games. Like, I get too nervous sometimes, even though it's like, especially if it's like a team game. Like, I remember, like, I played Overwatch like a little bit. Yeah. But, like, man, like playing that game when people are like, they call you out on not doing good enough uh, or something. Like, or they, or even if it's not me, like, if they're like calling somebody else on the team, I'm like, shit, I don't want to get called out. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't disappoint other people. Like, so can scare me away a little bit i'll just go back to like playing breath of the wild again or something there you go there you yeah. go dude breath of the wild could it was hard in the beginning holy crap like mm -hmm. i didn't know how to like get hearts or anything i was like three hearting it for like too mm -hmm. long 
Yeah. And, and oh my God, it's fucking brutal. And it, like, has a, it has a great difficulty curve. You can kind of control how hard it gets depending on where you go. And like the second time I'm playing it, I'm dumping everything into stamina. That's where I'm at now. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, just to make it harder. And then also like, then you're just like really fast and can climb really well. And so it's like the risk of getting hurt is like way higher, which kind of makes it like new game plusy, I guess. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to ask too, real quick, was what, like kind of going back to YouTube and to mm -hmm. YouTube channel, because you have 10, you have uh, 11,000 subscribers, I think. Do I? Oh boy. <laughs> I think you do, man. And that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So there's a couple of things I want to ask you real quick is because from zero to 100 is, you know, is, a, is one thing. And then from, from 100 to a thousand, cause like one with 1000, you get the community tab. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like basically YouTube telling you like you have a community now, mm -hmm. but um, what is the difference between 1,000 and 10,000? What, what, well, what is the difference? And then what do you think can help somebody that's maybe like in a thousand subs mm -hmm. get to 10,000 subs? Oof. Um, well, like in terms of what's new, like different about like the, the interface you mean, or like what that actually looks like? Oh, uh, no. Like, I guess it's, let me, it's kind of twofolded question. Mm -hmm. Basically like, um, what is the difference for you with the audience interaction and with um, building content uh, uh, now that you are at 10,000 subs versus when you were at 1,000? You know, I don't even think I've released very much in that gap. So I can't really say. But the thing is, like, when you, I, I try really hard to not think about the amount of people, even though I've mentioned that probably a couple of times tonight. Like, I think that it always just is feeling like people like the content enough to want to see more of it. And I yeah. think in the case of Zelda wave, it's not that people like my old music. And like, there are people who listen to my old music from, from Zelda wave as a starting point, which is cool. And I appreciate all that. But I think a lot of people subscribe because they want to, they don't want to miss the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess I would maybe if I'm giving advice or something, I would allude to the fact that like, quality is important in what you're doing um and that if you spend way too long doing something it's not great but if you can make something that's a really you think is is good and representative of what you're capable of of putting out and there's a sense where it could be continued you know like i think a lot of youtubers find their actual content niche like not right away. Like it usually takes a bit of seeing what works. And I think that's kind of, you know, and like sometimes it's like vlogging or something that's kind of simplistic. It's, it's even just the way that you lay things out or your style. And I think that it's important for, for content creators to be unique because YouTube is massive. There's millions of content creators and people and how do you stand out? Yes you know, it's the most impossible thing. And like, I don't really have a good answer because I didn't deliberately do anything. I say just like, keep at it, you know, finish things and do something that you are truly passionate about. And you, and you think it's some, I guess, you know, the, the mantra that I kind of have in terms of any art or content creation is that you should always be making something that you want to consume. Mm, and and the reality with Zelda waves before I ever made anything, I thought, I wonder if this exists, right? And I found those other videos that I was mentioning where they have that same title, but they're a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, this isn't quite what I want. So I'm going to make what I want. Yeah. And then that was sort of where it came out of. So I would think like, what's something that you haven't seen that you would like to see? Or what's like a variation of something that you like that you think you would like to see? And like, as long as you don't have completely unique tastes, like there are people who are going to agree with you because I'd never really thought that Zelda wave would resonate with people the way that it did. Especially cause like if people like in real life, like at my job or something like ask me about music at all. And I'm, I'd be like, okay, well, have you heard of vapor wave? I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well. uh, you know, and then trying to explain it from there is like weird. So this idea that like there are other people who have that same niche overlap, I guess. Yeah. Not even that niche, right? Like maybe at one point, but, 
I think do the thing that you want to consume and people will probably flock towards it. Um, and you might not be that good the first time you do it, but practice makes perfect and stay consistent on trying, you know, you don't have to be always putting content out all the time, but just work on it, you know, and, and don't be discouraged if people don't recognize it. I think, yeah. I don't know if that, if that makes any sense. I probably deviated from your question, but. <laughs> oh, you were good. That's, uh, that's lovely advice. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what do you think is the difference between vapor wave and synth wave and Zelda wave, man, because it seems like a wild west out here. I was going to say, I'll get crucified for answering this question. <laughs> I think like there are people who really gatekeep yeah. wave or, or vapor wave and chill wave or whatever but like i don't really think it matters it's just names and like i think vapor wave like there was definitely a point early on in like vapor waves history i guess where there's very specific kinds of art and there was sort of a, a pretty small collection and then like when it started branching out and kind of becoming more versatile and like things like chill wave were were coming out or like even like future funk right yeah future funk if you go on like a future funk video and like there are people who are like if one more person calls this vapor wave i'm gonna lose it it's like why does it matter like one wouldn't have existed without the other i feel like. yeah and so it's like if people like um try to argue or or discuss like whether zelda wave is vapor wave or chill wave or something if they if someone asks me what genre it is I'll say it's Zelda wave. It's its own thing, right? Obviously it's inspired by the visual style and the color palettes of like sort of the classic vaporwave style of like, you know, Miami skyline with pink and palm trees and then a computer background from the eighties or whatever. Like, yeah, exactly. That's all, that's all the, the root of the inspiration, but you know, I think that there's, there's probably a lot of answers for that. I don't know. I can think of certain songs, but at the end of the day, like these are just borders that people disagree with. People do the exactly. same thing with, like hip hop or, or trap versus what's trap and what's hip hop or like what's truly old school hip hop or like what's alternative rock or what's indie rock or psychedelic yeah. rock. Like there's so many, and I don't believe in putting things in boxes. I think that categorization is important for finding what you want to find and comparing things, but like, the over genreification of music can get really frustrating for me. Like when I was first like submitting music to blogs and stuff, when I was like making more kind of alternative rock, I guess, or psych rock or whatever you want to call it. I hated how many genres you had to list. <laughs> like, yeah. You have exactly. to like tell them like, what 10 artists do you sound like? And it's like, I, I think I said this a few times now, but like I try not to think too much about what I'm trying to sound like too much i try i don't know so it's like to me having to take something that is a little bit freely made and and then try to say exactly what it is like it doesn't really work i just think it's beyond trying to explain things in words and you can't really explain vaporwave that quickly i mean there are videos that are five minutes long or something but it scratches the surface so the answer is i don't know i don't know yeah well, awesome, man. Well, I uh, I appreciate you so much, man, for taking the time. And I know I've held you a little longer than I said I would, so I appreciate that too. Well, time's flying by. I'm talking a lot. So thanks for, <laughs> for hosting me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm super excited to get this up for people. I think they're going to fall in love with it and definitely mm. want to. I want to learn more about you and, mm. and, and I'm sure other people do too. And mm getting some a little a little little sample of the juicy trackness yeah fantastic it's really close like the songs are basically done like i can say that maybe that's something i've kind of hinted at to some people but like i don't know what i can do with them at this point and i've been capturing a lot of footage on the on emulators and stuff lately yeah yeah so like i'm i'm setting myself up to finish it and i what happened the first time i made zelda wave even before i knew people were working on it once I had like a chunk of the video, it 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 was like so much easier to come back to it because I could just watch the first minute of it and be like, ooh, I want to keep this going, you know? Mm-hmm. 
the music is a bit more of an iterative thing. So I think once I get the video going, it shouldn't be much longer. I know I've nice. people have wanted it already, but it's if close. you if you had to give me like a timeline, not a timeline, maybe mm-hmm. release date, pending, not a exact date, but you know, just some type of timeline of time frame of what you think, mm-hmm. what you would be comfortable kind of saying. So I want to. Th- <laughs> I'm. I'm. It's going to be done before the end of November, no matter what. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm hoping to be done before, like a f- like three three weeks in is my goal. That's before my birthday, and I want to finish it before I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's my that's my plan because I feel like it's been like two years. Is that right? Yes. That's the first one. That's crazy. I know, but, man. Yeah, but yeah. So let me say November, and like, people might not like that. I, there's a bunch of people like theorizing that I was going to drop it on Halloween, which because it's like a spooky game, but that seems yeah. like a random time after all this, you know. <laughs> I was th- I was this close to putting like a fake version on on April Fools or something like that. Back oh then. my gosh! I thought that'd be too mean, so I opted not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that's probably a good idea, but I mean I don't know. I would have liked it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's not it, worth the effort, I guess. Don't want to upset people more than I feel like I might already have, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. Um, well, again, thank you again. Um, I really appreciate it, especially being the very first one, sure. and it's like I feel like it's a, it's you know, it's a great baptism for the first. First of them, but also like something that I know a lot of people want to know more about Mm -hmm. and that are constantly asking about. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Thank you for all the praise. I feel, I feel, uh, it feels weird talking about it this much, but I I definitely enjoyed talking and I'll happily do it again sometime, maybe with better news about where it's all the way was at, but. uh, Or even Zelda Week 3 maybe yeah we'll see we'll see hard yeah (laughs) (laughs) awesome well thank you so much sure thank you man